Hello and welcome to episode 86 of Kaiju Curry House, the fortnightly show that gives you a healthy dose of Kaiju goodness every other Monday. I'm joined by Joe, Smokey Joe, no less. I'm Paul Williams and really need a better intro name. And today we're going to be looking forward to all the things Kaiju related coming in 2022. But before we get there, before we do, before we do, Joe, I have to ask, what have Kaiju been up to? Oh, well, in the world of Kaiju things, not a whole heck of a lot. Just patiently waiting for a few new X plus slash Star Ace figures to drop. They have a few out right now, you know, kind of pre-border and whatnot, but I'm still very patiently waiting for my dragon. So I will not be tempted. I will not be tempted in another direction. However, um, I will say I managed to wrap up the What If series from Marvel on Disney Plus. So are there kaiju in it? Is there anything great? We have kind of the Cthulhu-esque multi-dimensional squid monster. Okay. It makes a brief appearance in a couple of scenes. And we have a brief, well, we have a, quite a few actually different species of multi-dimensional monstrous fey-ish sort of creatures in the Doctor Strange episode, which are okay. They don't really appear much outside of the first episode. And I think the Doctor Strange one is the fourth one, but uh, it was fun to see. Other than that, not a ton, but it was a pretty decent series. Everybody loves a good what if story. So yeah, you know, good times. I'm meaning to check up on the uh, new Boba, Book of Boba Fett on Disney Plus. Okay, because yeah. I hear that has a great Harryhausen uh, homage in it. And yeah, yeah, episode looked, one. Yep, episode one, no less. I will check that out. Uh, haven't had the chance yet, though, because it's been up to other stuff at the moment. Um, Paul, good sir. What have Kaiju been up to? Tell our listeners what you have been. <sighs> yeah, well, um, do you know what? I also haven't been up to a massive amount of Kaiju stuff. Um, kind of loosely kaiju y. Uh, there's a game called Halo Infinite. You've probably heard of Halo. If not, you've been living under a rock for like the last 20 years. But it's Paul, I was there when the Deep Magic was written. I have played it on Legendary. <laughs> on the oh, really? Legendary. Xbox. Okay. Whole campaign, good sir. Wow. Okay. Well, the, the library newest one's out. sucked. The library <laughs> sucked. <laughs> yeah. Awesome game. The, the new one's just unbelievably good it's so so good and i've literally just started the campaign which is very similar to the first one so we're at a new halo ring new installation and other kaiju so, well that's it there's not really kai it's not a kaiju why but, are you why are you but sullying this sanctimonious because it has it has some really cool aliens in it it's got the cool creatures oh, but we've been over this are aliens are aliens technically kaiju no but I don't care. We talk about aliens on this on the podcast, and so I yeah, just well, think... Yeah, well, and Ghidorah they don't count. They're like giant monster ones. Yeah, there's no giant they're monsters. Just... We've got, like, they're like the Predator-style monsters that they've got the cloak and the armour, and then we've got the Hunters, which are quite big and kind of um, almost robotic. They've got some pipes and stuff going through them, and now they look more, you know, gruesome than ever. But I've just been... It's been consuming my downtime, which is why I wanted to throw it out there, and it does have some cool creatures. So that's why I'm allowing it. Um, I've also watched the first episode of Godzilla Chomp, which is this bite-sized series on the YouTube channel, um, Toho's official channel. And it just gives you a bit of information about Toho outside of Japan. So what their US office does. And it gives you like mm. a little tour of the office and it shows you some of the merchandise that they've um, like created there. So that was quite interesting. I think it's like a weekly or fortnightly show. And it started in November. So there's a few episodes to catch up on. But if you've got like five minutes, you can watch an episode and just learn something new about Toho US. Hmm. So, okay. yeah, yeah. And also just, I can see out the corner of my eye here. I read Godzilla Rulers of Earth, volume one. Oh, awesome. So there's six volumes. I don't, I think it's, I'm not, I don't know how many issues are in a volume. I think it's like five episodes, five issues, isn't it? Do they have the letters to the editor in the back? No, they got script to page things. They've got the, the different variant covers, but there's no letters to the editor. Uh, so they were like, uh, they let 
fans ask questions uh, via Facebook and a few other things, and they put them into the comics. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so I actually got featured on this. <gasps> nice. Yeah, I'm, I, I have a brief blurb in <laughs> Rulers of Earth, which I will be very proud of. This is before the podcast, folks. This is just Nerdy Joe back in the day. And I, you know, I was just like, great stuff, guys. Absolutely love it. How old you know, is it? Oh, gosh. Is it that old? Like, I thought it was a new thing. I was in the United States when it first came out. So that's at least eight years old. Oh, wow. So, okay. There's yeah. no. Yeah. So anyways, I basically said, you know, great stuff, guys. But I got to ask, are any B listers going to like take down any A listers? Because, you know, wanted some upsets. <laughs> wanted my Titanosaurus to get in there, you know? And they said, yeah, but of course, you know, it was like the Gargantuas and Anglis and, you know, B-listers that are really kind of A-listers for a lot of folks. Yeah. And Titanosaurus did like nil. <laughs> you and Titanosaurus. I love my big orange warbly <laughs> monster. I do. I do. But... um yeah, I made it in there, and I have that issue, and then I think it's in the collected volume, like the big thick one. You can uh, you can check it out. Okay. That's, neat. that's really cool. Yeah, I just had a look, and that was this is the the version I've got is the fourth edition of this, and it was 2015. So the original comics must have been yeah a while ago. Ah, oh, yeah, I have the like giant like omnibus size ones. Okay, just yeah. a one and a two. And I went for those ones and yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And they, to this day, I mean, I love the singular point Jet, Jet Jaguar, but the one in Godzilla Rulers of Earth, like they wrote that guy, right? I mean, it was fantastic. He did like an Ant-Man up the Thanos move on Orga. <laughs> it was amazing. Kids don't look that up on the internet, but you know, it, it was fantastic. It really exemplified all that a Godzilla series could be like there weren't a lot of talking heads you know like it was just kaiju battles and like trying to figure out what was going on there were some aliens involved it was fast-paced it was fun and it just in some ways it was predictable but it was the right kind of predictable you know yeah. like we always knew that the Marvel characters were going to beat Thanos we always knew that that was coming but the ride was fantastic. Sorry if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, folks, but I feel, <laughs> like at this point, I feel like at this point, I don't have to apologize to anybody. But, you know, it, it was really fantastic. I really enjoyed that series. And it's sitting right next to the Marvel Essential Godzilla omnibus that I have because I love it that much. I love it that much. And those two are sitting next to the Dark Horse collected editions of Godzilla, which... Also, love. I think I've got the Dark Horse, the individual um, issues of that. Yeah, the Dark Horse was cool. It came out, there were two like black and white omnibuses, and uh, there was an issue, there was a one and a two. And I'll never forget because the two, because I didn't know what had come out. So when the two and it like opened up and Godzilla was like attacking the Titanic, I was like, huh? What? <laughs> and, and, what? The Dark Horse ones are also fantastic. Like, some of the like one of those uh, issues was written by Bob, written and inked by Bob Eggleton, and it, it like it just had no words. It was it was almost like Ricardo de Gallo did like an Age of Reptile Reptiles only was Godzilla. Okay, yeah. And it's just like Godzilla wakes up and he's just doing his Godzilla thing and he just fights a monster and it's just there's no need for words. There really wasn't, and pretty much all of the villains in that series were original. They That's had cool. like, yeah, they had like a cyberzilla, but oh yeah, that that old gold, wasn't he? I had the black and white, so I've never oh, actually okay. looked it up. <laughs> but uh, it it like that was the closest I think we really came to, you know, like an actual Toho monster. They had we like had, a, they had a giant bat, didn't they? They had a giant bat that tried to eat Godzilla. Yeah, they had an oni, which was really cool. So. Basically, this creature was made of stone, and every time you destroyed it, it reconstructed itself only larger. But it could only do this on land. So the Oni, you know, like Godzilla kept destroying it until it was like as big as Godzilla. And then they fought each other, and like it drove him off the island, which was its goal. 
they landed in the sea. So like the last shot is Godzilla swimming away. And then you look beneath the waves and the Oni's standing there, like, uh, like not reforming or anything. It can't move because it's off the island, but you know, like it, it accomplished its mission. That yeah. was cool. Um, yeah, we had the Cyberzilla. We had like predators, like giant sized predators tried to take down Godzilla. Dark Horse did a lot of really cool things in their run. And I got to give them credit because all of the issues looked fantastic. Uh, what IDW has done, I don't fault them for anything because they took Godzilla in different directions. They did different things with the character. But with Dark Horse, it was kind of like a linear plot that followed like the same team all the way through. And the art was just consistent. It was great. I mean, I really enjoyed what they did. It was kind of like what uh, happened with Rulers of Earth. Like it was just the same team all the way through. Even the Marvel Godzilla, like the art and the direction kind of hops all over the place. But Godzilla was like making different appearances, I guess you could say. Like he fought the Avengers. It was pretty funny. But I digress, which is what I am great at. You are fantastic at this. Yeah, I, I know how to drive a podcast wildly. <laughs> yeah, course, yeah, let's not folks. talk about the past. Let's look forward. Let's look to the future. Right, we've got well. we've got games we've got we've got films we've got all sorts coming out haven't we so all right but yeah, i'm not gonna let you throw us off course with any more of this halo nonsense okay? oh i will that's, that, i that's promise i am promising you i will stretching it thin paul it's that not stretching it thin it's not they're really cool yeah. folks they're who are c- listening to this podcast i want you to comment on whatever medium you see fit <laughs> paul is trying to bring in non-kaiju related things under this podcast I'm call, I'm drawing a line on Halo, dude. Well, I, I'd say Matango isn't kaiju, but we still discussed that. So, yeah, but that's practical effects and creatures and Toho. I feel like we can kind of get away with that. <sighs> so, what if I told you there's a Halo TV series with practical creature effects in it? Eh, Coming to Paramount good. Plus this year. Paramount Plus. Okay. We're going to ignore your Halo comments. <laughs> we're going to jump to we're going to jump to Paramount Plus, folks. So let's okay. talk about let's talk about new and cool kaiju stuff that's been going on. Who has seen Rumble? I've seen Rumble. Have you seen I've Rumble? I've just Paul? seen Rumble. <laughs> just you now, <laughs> you've just seen the trailer. For Rumble. I've just seen a trailer like ten minutes ago. <laughs> right. So, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of the podcast, if you have young children and you want to indoctrinate them into the world of giant monsters, check out Rumble, currently available on Paramount+, Plus, which is a subscription service similar to Netflix or Disney+, Plus, and you can see it. So what is it about? It is about Steve, who is kind of a lazy bum, a monster, and in his world there's like a monster wrestling federation and steve's well it's implied i can't really go into too much details because it's new as spoilers folks but basically there is an antagonist called tentacular and he's like the cool wrestling guy and then there's steve and he's fighting for his hometown and they got to get money through like the wrestling and stuff so Steve must complete his underdog journey to wrestle Tentacular in like the ultimate final monster wrestling match. And Steve looks kind of like, you know, a dinosaur with ram's horns. He's got a bit of a tummy on him. I think Seth Rogen voices the character. And then Tentacular, he's shark to puss for kids, for lack of better terms. He looks pretty cool. And uh, it's a kid's movie, folks. Like it, it's sickeningly wholesome and uh i'm not gonna lie I, I was a bit bummed from the fact that it was kind of borrowing from a lot of other films there wasn't too much overall originality in it but your kids are gonna love it because they don't know this stuff but if you've been in the monster game long enough like paul and i you're gonna be able to see like ah, oh, they borrowed from that movie oh borrowed from that movie it's, oh. not, it's, it's not aimed at us is it it's, it's, it's a, not it's aimed yeah. at the kids it's a kid's movie it's going to be the same as Minions. You know, it, it's that target audience. Exactly, exactly. And I think and the kids will have a lot of fun with it. Oh, they are. They're going to have loads of fun with it. But you know what I haven't seen for uh, this film is any merch. That's surprising. You think that this is the That's perfect... why I bring it up. Yeah. Kids love to buy stuff. Yeah. And like, if you're going to release it after, after Christmas, after the holiday season, like, you got money from grandma and grandpa floating around usually. <laughs> I'll say. But yeah. 
So totally check out Rumble on Paramount Plus. It's so, pretty good. Yeah, so that's Paramount Plus, and that's literally came out what two weeks ago in the US. Yeah. But hasn't come out to the UK yet. Yeah. So and we don't know. We don't know when or if. Who's? I mean, someone's going to pick up, aren't they? Netflix, Amazon. Who knows? Or it'll go well, straight to on demand. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. But uh, it will find its way. It will. Oh yeah, it'll yeah. definitely find its way. We just have we just have an odd way of getting these things it's kind of like uh with uh godzilla versus kong we kind of had to like well, yeah that's it that's like hbo good... max where is it going to land is it going to be yeah. amazon is it going to be google you know, who's who's going to fork up the money for it we, we just yeah. don't know well we will find out eventually so moving on we've got a couple of really cool kaiju films coming out yeah you compiled a list good sir and i think I did. some of them are on the money I think, I mean, so we've got Shin Ultraman, which mm -hmm. I think it's been in development for quite a while. I remember seeing a trailer early last year. Well, in a COVID world, I feel like we yeah. can for, kind of forgive two years. Yeah, so. but that's, I mean, that's very much, is it's going back to the roots and it's based on the, I think the original TV series. Which will it's, mean it's awesome. It's not going to be anything like that. If you've seen the Netflix anime, forget that. <laughs> He's going to get big in this. Yeah, we saw it, thankfully, in the trailer. We got a giant Ultraman. And he's going to do some punchy, punchy stuff. It's going to be great. Yeah. And is it... Am I mistaken? Is it done by the same team who did Shin Godzilla? Take a hard pass, Paul. I have okay. not looked that up. I like Ultraman, but I can't say that I'm going to proclaim to be any kind of Ultraman expert. If it's on, no. I'll watch it. I, I have no um, ties to that. But the trailer looked pretty cool. Yeah, this could I'll be give the it a go. into it. I watched the Netflix one. The Netflix one was okay. I dug it. I, I, I like that. I was into the yeah, Netflix one. I was kind of like a bit bummed that the monsters weren't ginormous anymore, but you know, it's okay yeah. with it. But Fair I'll totally enough. watch. I'll totally watch like the old rubber suit one. That that was that was grand. So yeah, we got Shin Ultraman. Joe is personally excited to see some Jurassic World Evolution. No, not Jurassic. It's was it Jurassic domination it, do, uh, dominion. dominion dominion sorry we got jurassic world evolution to the game uh yeah yeah at our at our home and uh it's been cool because you get the aquatic uh, creatures in this one so there's oh, that's hey, on my hey, mind, you're, but... you're playing a game joe sorry just i'm not oh, okay. our little boy is but anyway <laughs> I, I i will watch the cool dinosaur animations <laughs> Not that the aquatic creatures are dinosaurs but you know anyways so jurassic world dominion's coming out is it kaiju related? Dinosaurs are kind of like the original kaiju, and it's cool to see giant reptilian creatures fighting about. So we enjoy that. T Rex does go on a rampage. We'll allow it. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if there's going to be any more like Indominus Rex type creatures. You know. They have proclaimed that there would be no more hybrids. Oh, really? In the Jurassic World series. Yeah, after um, the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor, they kind of decided to let that end. However, in Camp Cretaceous, there is a multitude of hybrids. So you're okay. welcome to check that out. But Jurassic World Dominion tries to set up like new baddies. So we have a new species of raptor. Oh. We have the Giganotosaurus, which is the new antagonist versus Rexy. And I still, like I, I've mentioned this in another podcast episode already, like why are you throwing together a Giganotosaurus and a T-Rex in the initial- Why not? Cretaceous fight scene when those two creatures oh, sorry, did yeah. not exist side by side. Anyways, moving on. I think that's. Uh, uh, just say, are you excited for that film? Because after Fallen Kingdom, I'm not. I'm really struggling with. It, I want honestly. to. I will. I will see it, but I'm just mm, very I'm, lukewarm. I'm, str I'm struggling with it, but I love a good Mosasaur. I do. So. For those who don't know, Joe's from Kansas, and Kansas has mosasaurs. So I really enjoy that species of ancient reptile. And the fact that they had one in Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World, it made me really happy. And apparently the mosasaur is going to get some limelight. And I just, I'm just i happy for that. I will watch that. You know, takes down a submarine or whatever. Cool. But uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, we have Alien Planet on your list, Paul. Yeah, well, tell, I mean, we've got to give, tell me about Alien Planet. We've got to give a shout out to a um, friend of the podcast, Alan Maxson, who finished shooting Alien Planet last year, and it's now in um, post-production. 
it was a Kickstarter project that he did. It's been something that he's working towards for a long time. And it's, I mean, I don't want to say, again, is, is it going to be Kaiju? It's, it's aliens. It's practical effects. It's aliens. But it has it's, alien monsters in it. Yeah, that's yeah. It's going to be an alien monster. I'm not sure how much we'll see of it. But um, from what I'm trying to actually remember now, that it's it's about the hunt for a, for a, a water source, isn't it? There's like two yeah. um, different factions of an alien planet basically fighting for this um, limited resource. And I think they have to team up to a degree to try and find it. But who knows what will happen when they find it and what horrors they'll um, encounter on the way to finding it. Yeah, we had Alan on in a previous episode discussing Alien Planet, and it looks to be a load of fun. All of Alan's projects so far have been fun. Some of them have been tongue in cheek. Alan, I know you're <laughs> listening, but uh, really excited because he's agreed to come back on the podcast once it's gotten a little farther in production. And I'm excited to see it yeah. because it's going to be a great film. So yeah, Alien Planet, looking forward to that in 2022. We've got Avatar 2. Apparently we have Avatar 2. How long have it been since up? Avatar? Oh, like 10 years. It's been a while. I loved Avatar though. I still love Avatar. That's I, an, This is again, a film with aliens in it, but it's creaturey. But they're really However, cool creatures. They are really cool creatures. Maybe not so much in the practical effects department, but you know. They're pretty special, awesome. special effects, though. You know, visual effects, it was stunning. That oh, world yeah, they that... created. And who knows what other creatures are going to be in the sequels. Because you know, That they're... greater oh, Leonopteryx oh, was amazing. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's just been so long. Films. It's just been so long that I don't, I don't well, know if people are going to care. Apparently, two is being released this year and three is being released the next year. Yeah. There's probably going to be a four, five, and six. I think he's got it whole, you know, he... He's planned a lot out. He's we'll he, put see if the it takes off. He, he put the work into the first one, so I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm sure I will enjoy the sequels, unless they go a Matrix route. God, that mm. movie did not need another two films. Oh wait. Um, <laughs> so moving on to series that are outstaying their welcome, Fantastic Beasts. I haven't seen any of these yet. Okay, so Fantastic but Beasts. Folks. I know. I know the premise. <laughs> Yeah, so we have Newt's commander. We have, I might mispronounce his name, maybe because my, my mouth just doesn't want to say it, but Grindelwald. And uh, he's kind of like the Voldemort, Voldemort before Voldemort. And uh, he's found, oh, I can't, I can't give spoilers, can I? But anyways, Newt's commander, he absolutely loves Fantastic Beasts. He is like a magical Steve Irwin. Um, he's not as cool as Hagrid though. But anyway... There are lots of creatures, or at least there were lots of creatures in these films. And it's just, it's fun to like, delve into Harry Potter. Kids love it. This is a British podcast. We have to mention Harry Potter at some point. You know, we just have to get around to it like once a year. So this is the token episode. Um, Kaiju cleanup. Let's move on to that. This is a really other interesting concept. So, Paul, we've, yeah. killed, the kai we've killed the kaiju. We we've killed the kaiju. And... And now what do we do? Because we've got this giant we monster clean corpse. It up. Yeah, we got to <laughs> clean it up. So this reminds me, this is on YouTube, folks, but a long while back, there was a whale that rather than like bury it, drag it out to sea or something, they just strapped dynamite to its corpse after it died on the beach. This is a true story in the United States. It sounds very American, I know. So they put way too much dynamite on this whale oh no and like chunks were falling on people and cars like well far away but it was all captured on film quite gruesome but like lovely but when a whale you know like dies and gets washed up on a beach people like to live near beaches and it becomes like a health hazard so I'm sure Kaiju Cleanup will deal with like the health hazard of a giant rotting creature around yeah. or within a city. I, I guess. I mean, it is um, meant to be, it is tongue in cheek. It is like, it's a comedy, a comedy Kaiju film. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be, it's very interesting. Very Japanese, I'm sure. They make the best ones. They okay. do. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's just something about them, isn't there? But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very curious about that film. It's a great it concept. 
it really is because it yeah, feels we, like rather than a it feels like rather than a film it could be like a series like a sh- like a mini series you know like seven okay, episodes yeah. of them like clearing away the monster week by week or something like that or like you could have like a mini series of this and then like the same characters could be like they move to like another monster or something like that i then feel like that just would be clean like a, up a different monster every week or no like for every seven episodes it's like a different monster with like a different challenge or something like that like this one's blood is molten lava and you know blah 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 it's like dang it why did they kill that one i don't want to clean that up you know like that could be a great reoccurring show idea so there you go yeah so i think that's um yeah i think that i think that's good it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting yeah there's a fun smattering of films definitely coming out and that that is all the films isn't it that we know of as of now yeah, yeah. At the moment, this is at what we've moment. researched, folks. But yeah, I mean, let's face it; it's, it's, it's January. Who knows what's going to be announced? There's lots that could come out. All but right, I know, I know, you, I, know you, <laughs> I know it sounds like your tongue, Paul. I'm just, well, I'm just going to let you like you don't have to think about it anymore. You don't have to pretend. What games are coming out? No, no. I was going to say, um, I wonder if we we'll any hear about Cloverfield because I've been waiting for the official Cloverfield sequel. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, a proper like, follow-up, not not the films like Ten Cloverfield Lane or Paradox, the actual sequel mm. that they're gonna do. You see, like the thing is, is like I really loved the original Cloverfield movie when it came out. I thought that was a wonderful concept. And then they kind of ruined it with like those little sequels. Like, don't like get me wrong, Ten Cloverfield Lane was a great film. I just like I didn't really as much as I love monsters and stuff, I didn't really prefer the ending. Yeah. But uh the cloverfield paradox that was a film that i feel like didn't need to be a film (laughs) it didn't jive with me i'm sure it found its target audience it looked like a lot of effort went into it well done to everybody did it it just didn't strike home with me so if there is like an actual cloverfield movie that picks up where the first one left off would genuinely well that's it yeah because the other two were just placeholders weren't they they just bought the rights and stuck cloverfield in at the start and end and that was it well, the thing is, is the first film makes you feel emotionally involved with the characters. You want to see what happens. Yeah. And we were left with a fair amount of mystery at the end. The two characters we were most invested in, we wanted to see what happened to them. We never did. <laughs> we'll have to do we, an episode about Cloverfield. We will. We, we will. will. Yeah. That's definitely one we've missed. Um, right. But let's... Tell me about games. Tell let's me about take games. A quick, let's take a quick break and then we'll look at the games and anything else coming out. I know you love your games. There we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of Kaiju Curry House. In this section, we are talking about the games and other such great kaiju goodies that are coming out in 2022. Paul was just about to spin me his yarn of what (laughs) fabulous things to expect on a console or phone. Paul, take it away. Okay, well, let's talk, because I don't dabble much in phone gaming, but console gaming, that's where I live and breathe. And we've got Dawn of the Monsters coming out very, very soon. Okay. Now, we had uh, Alex come on the show, the mm-hmm. creative director of 13A Games, and he he told us all about it. It looks fantastic. It's a 2D um, side-scrolling brawler where you play as a kaiju fighting other kaiju through it was like 70 levels, and it's co-op online play, so you can get together with a friend. You beat up some Nephilim. Beat up some Nephilim. That's it, Nephilim. Yeah, that's it. And you can level up your kaiju, so... Depending, depending on how you perform, you'll get different rewards, which just um, let you buy whatever, whatever you want. You, you can, there'll be a, an upgrade tree for your kaiju, mm-hmm. so you can focus on strength or speed or ability. And I just think that's going to be a lot of fun, because it's very... The gameplay is very old school. It's like Streets of Rage, Golden Axe. You know, it's, it's a 90s arcade classic, but it's with a comic book style art. Mm-hmm. And with so many levels and with all the upgrades i think there's gonna be a lot of replayability there and plus you know online play just makes it like like a lot of fun i'm hoping that we can yeah. um we can get in on that so that's uh that's coming to i mean every console and pc and stadia but they, everything yeah they know, covered every base they, they, yeah them. they they said it's going to come out to every every console um currently available and i yeah i'm really looking forward to that so that's awesome. um, that's very very cool. Um, there's also another title coming out called um, Gigabash. Now, Gigabash looks 
very gorgeous. This is a full 3D title. And if you imagine Godzilla Melee or you know, Godzilla Save the Earth, Godzilla Unleashed, that whole series, it's a... The Pipeworks needs to remaster? The, they're the ones, yeah. Yeah, think yeah. of them, but modern. So we've now got you know, so like gorgeous a pipeworks, graphics. So a, so a Pipeworks <laughs> remastered those. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. If... If they ever, I don't even know if they have the rights to Godzilla anymore. To be fair, Shh. it passes. Shh. <laughs> don't kill my dream. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Yeah. Okay. Well, someone someone else has obviously got tired of waiting for them to remaster it, and they said, "Well, yeah. do you know we're, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to do a four-player, full three D fighter, but we're going to have to create all our own original kaiju." Fair enough. But you know, that's what you're going to get. You're going to have a fully destructible. 3d city to fight with three of your friends in online or offline and just you know just battle it out it, it's it's something that we haven't had in such a long time and i don't know why but you know they've obviously seen the gap in the market and thought hey let's let's have a fun beat em up let's just let's just do something where we can have giant monsters throwing each other against buildings exactly and that's um that is actually coming just Actually, no, it's coming to PlayStation and PC. So not as many places to play this one. They said they do hope to get it on Xbox and Switch at some time, but that's not where it's being released. Um, I've heard good things. I'm part of the Discord chat and they had a, a beta recently. Uh, I know Matt Frank was actually in there and he had a play and he said you know, he really enjoyed it and he's done some artwork for it as well. So that's very cool. Look forward to that. And the one other title that I've heard about is something called Kaiju Wars, which is currently available on PC and mm -hmm. is now coming to consoles this year. And unlike the other two, this is much slower. It's a turn-based, it's a 2D turn-based Kaiju game where you play as the army and you've got to fight against the monsters. So that's going to be... Tedious, in a word? What, sorry? Tedious? Tedi no, 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 not tedious. Do you not like turn-based? You're not a fan of that that style? I, th I think, well, I played Legend of the Dragoon. That was my last, like, proper turn-based experience. Okay. That was ages ago on a PS1. Or was it PS <laughs> no, it was PS1. PS1. PS1, okay. Well, I mean, like, the original Final Fantasy games, they're all turn-based. I know. Legend uh, of the Dragoon was uh, very much in that style. And um, Advance Wars was something on the on Nintendo that I absolutely loved, where you just had, and it's basically rock, paper, scissors, but you had, you know, obviously ground and air units, vehicles and people. And I just I just found it was really fun. It was great to kind of pick up and play that you could, you could have a few moves and then come back to it. Because it's turn-based, there's no rush. You can, you can take your time with it. So I think, I think it could be quite good. It's not, I mean, it's very, it's like pixel graphics. So it's, it looks, you know, like an old game. Um, it's apparently eight hours long story-wise. So, you know, it's, I don't, I don't know, um, but I'll definitely check it out. I hope it comes to something, I say, I, I basically, I hope I don't have to pay for it. And it comes to one of the free <laughs> things like a Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus or something like that. But I'm going to give it a go. Um, if I can, because I like Kaiju and yeah, I do like turn-based games. It's just been quite a while since I've played them. Well, I showed my age and how long ago was I played them. <laughs> so, but there we are. There we are. There we are. I mean, yeah. that's they're the only games that I know of. I mean, that I should say, there's there's tons of games with cool creatures in. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an absolute ton, too many to mention. But these are the ones that are actually kaiju okay i won't you know because because there's going to be millions of halo or you know there's something there's gonna be aliens or um you've probably know, heard of elden ring yeah maybe, heard of that. yeah so i mean that's written by the game of thrones guy and that's gonna be you know there's gonna be lots of um uh, george r. r martin or the show stuff. for the show writers oh sorry yeah, no um george r. Very martin the, yeah, the book saying, writer there's a very important distinction to be made there okay <laughs> apologies <laughs> the show writers show writers they, they've kind of caught a bit of flack for that those last few seasons so, okay uh, no they're not involved it's nothing to do with the, the show writers it's okay just, yeah the, the, um, so so yeah i mean that's that's um i mean it's, 
a big hype game. I, again, I've seen a trailer there. There look like there were some trolls and and things. In it. So there is definitely going to be creatures, but not on the level that you know the the other titles that I wanted to mention were on. That's all. Okay. Fair enough. So what else have we got, Joe? We've got we moving on to comics. Let's let's talk about yeah. What else have we got? Comics. We've got what have we got, Joe. We've got Godzilla versus the Power Rangers is <laughs> finally happening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Power Rangers. I mean, they'll just get stepped on. But the Dragon Zord, on the other hand... The Dragon Zord is basically Mechagodzilla. Yeah. But they, I really hope they deliver on a very cool fight. Oh, they they will. They have to. And I think all the right people are going to be involved in it. You can't not involve... I mean, IDW's got such a great talent pool when it comes to Godzilla. Yeah. The thing is, though, is we want to see Godzilla win. We want to see the Rangers win. You can't just pit those two against each other. So <laughs> hopefully there's like a team up or something at the end, you know, like I'm sure they're Goldar, both. a Goldar type menace or something like that. Zed becomes huge. Who knows? But the point is, is the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are squaring off against the King of the Monsters himself. Couldn't be more excited for it. <laughs> I'm amazed it's taken this long. Yeah. I mean, like, this is 30 years in the making, folks, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be fantastic. That's that's going to be a cool concept. I feel like those two properties are just big enough and have such a following that like you can't really try to get that wrong. But IDW has done such a great job with like absolutely so ma- with so many crossover events. We had the Transformers and Ghostbusters crossover, which I thought was great. <laughs> the Ecto One turns into a Transformer. How cool is that? But, uh, and not only that, but like, he's a ghost busting transformer. So, I mean, like they've got like a really, they've got, they've, they've got like a talent pool that like knows how to spin these properties. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. So that's where I'm kind of at with comics. That's the one that I've seen that I'm really excited about. I'm sure that there are others trickling out. All sorts of indie comics feature Kaiju these days. Oh yeah. There's going to be a a ton. I'm sure. And again, we know IDW publishing will probably have a lot more coming out but that i mean this is the one that i think we're both excited for and the only one that we really know of at the moment yeah so moving on let's talk about some merch oh, have you seen any good merch lately would you i mean the only merch that i know is definitely coming out this year or I bet be coming out this year is the dragon sword that i pre-ordered last year <laughs> and I can't wait for that. You're gonna be sitting with your dragons or reading your pencil or some power be. Yeah, yeah, your wife's gonna be like, How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I thought I married an adult. <laughs> no, no, she no, she didn't marry an adult. Man child right here. <laughs> no, we don't we never grew up. We just became kids with adult money. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of merch, I've seen a few really cool things coming out. We have the Star Ace, like life-size Boobo the Owl, which is oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, life-size Boobo, folks. You know you want it. Um, we've got the Godzilla versus Kong, King Kong, with his whopping huge axe, which will also have a light-up feature, no less. How cool is that going to be? So we've got a couple of really great things coming out. However, we still have not had a Harryhausen dragon. About say, is that this year? Is that, that's going to be this year, isn't it? I I <laughs> hope so. And I've noticed for anybody who's listening, Jeremy, yeah. that a life size Dorat <laughs> still hasn't been made. <laughs> so you know that'd be cool to see. But no, we've had a lot of great things from Star Ace and uh, X Plus. One of the things that I'm really impressed with Star Ace is they've uh, thrown out a couple of uh, prehistoric creatures models, which is a cool thing to branch out with. I think I've mentioned that previously on the podcast, but they've got a great concavenator, which is in a really nice dynamic pose. It is feathered. It is fairly accurate, if not, you know, scientifically accurate as you can be right now. So, you know, check that stuff out. A lot of good stuff going on there. We have Nanmu, which is a uh, company that usually makes dinosaur models. They've been doing like models based off of the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. And they made my Visatosaurus Rex, which I keep behind me, which is an awesome, awesome model. But they're doing an Ultimasaurus, which for anybody who is familiar with the Jurassic Park Chaos Effect line, 
they know that the Ultramasaurus was like the creme de la creme of that line. And it was probably on any, every Jurassic Park nerd's want list because it was never released. Everybody was jonesing for it, but that figure ended up never being released, probably for a couple of reasons, not least of which was the abundance of sharp spikes and parts that were on that toy meant for children. <laughs> so, um, you know, that probably didn't help it along. But uh, the Ultimasaurus is a combination of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a Triceratops, a Velociraptor, and an Ankylosaurus. And Nanmu is making it, and it will have its regular version, which comes with two sets of horns, one looking more devilish than the other, pun intended. And uh, the deluxe version will come with a base, which is uh, it breaking out of a paddock or next to a paddock. So it'll have like the Jurassic Park electric fence, which is really cool. Okay. They've uh, teased the Ultimasaurus on their Instagram page. And so far it looks amazing. They put up the uh, 3D modeling of it last year. And this year they have released an actual, uh, they've released actual photos of a product, which hasn't been painted yet but it'll be awesome. And one of the neat things about Nanmu is they do offer alternate paint jobs. So my Vestatosaurus, for example, it came with a jungle variant, which is what you see in Peter Jackson's King Kong. And there was also like a sunset dusk variant, which kind of had like a black back or, you know, like getting dark up towards the back. And then it had like red streaks and orangish cans going down towards its underbelly. So it's really neat to see that. The base for my Vestatosaurus Rex, like it's amazing. I totally recommend going to Lux if you can because the base I got with my Vestatosaurus, it's heavy, it holds the figure. And it was just a bunch of Kong skulls, which were weathered so nicely and it was great. So yeah, I would totally look out for that in terms of merch there. That company's doing a great job. You found any uh, merch that you're looking at? I'm I'm looking forward to see what Defa Reels are announced this year. I'm, I mean, like... Because it's been a while since I've seen one. I'm currently saving for that. I know you're still show. waiting for your dragon. But if a Defa Real dragon came out, <laughs> or a Titanosaurus, <laughs> that would be tough. That would be really tough. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I don't know what is coming out, but I'm looking forward to see what they, you know, what they do. I, I think we're going to have to get jeremy or, or someone back on the show and just say give us some hints what's coming out this year yeah 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 because they're constantly well, releasing stuff you know it's i just... know that the kraken is finally shipping this year oh, that's a big one isn't it that is a big one <laughs> that is a big one and i will have to get a picture of it next to my gigantic shin oh, Godzilla yes. i have here in the background and i'll have to see like how they stack up size wise but that will be a really cool figure. I love the way that they did the curving sculpt of that tail. Rather than make a straight tail, they gave it like a curve. Like, so it's kind of going okay. in a loop-de-loop. -loop. So I think that was a really nice touch to save on shelf space and make it look more dynamic. Yeah, it's okay. coming out. They've, Star Ace has done such an incredible job with the Ray Harry House of Mine. It is just a sight to behold all of those figures. And if I could get all of them, I would, but Space and money. You got to pick your favorites. <laughs> so let's uh, go and talk about some speculative stuff, shall we? Or shall we save Ooh. that for part three, sir? No, go for it. I think I think we can do that before we wrap up, actually, because we've gone along quite nicely here. Oh, all right. So we've got a couple of speculative things that might be coming out. So we have Pacific Rim, uh, The Black, which... Netflix kind of gave us the intention that they were going to continue that series because it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean, they have confirmed season two is coming. No, oh, there we go. They just haven't said when. Ah, oh, cheeky. Um, uh, I mean, it, it could be this year, couldn't it? It came out last March and it was, I think it was, they started it in 2020. It's, 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 it's possible we could come out this year, I would well, say. The way that they're cranking out Camp Cretaceous seasons, I mean, like, they certainly could. Yeah. So yeah, Netflix the Black, or not Netflix. Well, <laughs> Pacific Rim the Black. Pacific Rim Black by Netflix. Goodness gracious me, I'm getting tired. So yeah, this show ended on a very Attack on Titan sort of note where human beings can kind of turn into kaiju, which I was not expecting. 
but spoilers for all of you who I didn't announce for. My apologies <laughs> there. But uh, at least you won't be mildly disappointed like I was. <laughs> um, I feel it was like fine. It, it was I, fine. Was it though? I feel yeah, like Pacific it was fine. Rim... It, was, it was fine. That's it. It wasn't great. It, it wasn't I bad. Feel... Was it, it was though? just fine. Was it though? I watched. I, well, like... I had it on in the background. <laughs> Maybe I should say that. It's good. It, you know, you can have it on and go about on your phone. You. I I really enjoy the first Pacific Rim movie, but I feel like everything that's come out <laughs> after that got my hopes up. Okay. And then I don't know if I have ultra high expectations. But yeah, maybe it's, it maybe didn't it's live true. up to the hype. Yeah. So no, yeah. I I thought I I thought it was going to be awful, and I was pleasantly surprised that it was it was okay. Not high praise, but I'm not you know I'm not against it. I'm. I'd watch another season. I'd, I'd put it on. So if we want to talk high praise for a moment, season two of Singular Point. Yeah. That, I don't know when that's hidden. Have they even confirmed season two? No, I, they haven't, no. but they've kind of hinted at it. So it, again, was... the cliffhanger ending, it, it makes sense it's going to come. And I'm pretty sure it's been well regarded. Oh, yeah, it has been so, well regarded. There's no reason think, why there shouldn't be another one. I think the community was a little bit split by how much physics they needed to digest oh, in order to yes. like go through Singular Point. Me, me included. <laughs> but I don't think anybody... But I, we can I, I forgive think, that because it was so cool. Because it was so cool. <laughs> and like everything got mentioned. You got to see like a whole range of monsters and whatnot in ways that you hadn't seen them before. And... It could also be because expectations were so low after the first anime trilogy yeah. that Netflix did. That is I think true. we broke a lot of new ground and it was interesting. It, it but, was different, yeah, but not... Yeah. Missed the mark but, a bit. But singular point, I feel like it, it's come as close to the bullseye as Netflix has. Um, or in, Quite frankly, I enjoy I enjoyed singular point as much as I would say I enjoyed Godzilla the series. That... Okay. Uh, the American studios did with good old Gino at the uh, helm. But uh, I'm, I, I really liked that series growing up and singular point. I just, the vibe of it was really cool. and I've enjoyed the merch. I have the yeah, Godzilla Aquaticus got some behind me. Yeah. yeah. I got my Godzilla Aquaticus. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm chilling. I got my Titanosaurus mosh. I'm, I'm you know, I'm willing to tolerate a lot for a Titanosaurus, I'll tell you what. But no, that was a really great series. And I'm excited to see what more merch was, you know, was, might come out for it. There was an SH, SHMA Monster Arts uh, Godzilla that came out, which was pretty good. Um, I've seen people like show off how long the tail is. And apparently it had really good articulation for SHMA. And um yeah, so that's good. I think the Jet Jaguar is coming out. They've been teasing images of that. So everybody's going to get the uh, singular point Jet Jaguar. Just, you know, it'd be nice to see a few more forms. The Gorosaurus form, um, forgive me, that's what I'm calling it, which is the greenish Godzilla form in between Godzilla Aquaticus and Godzilla Ultima. Okay, yeah. I really enjoyed, enjoyed the way that one looked. It was pretty great i like the vivid colors i like the large forearms and it, you know it had a lot going for it before going to more traditional godzilla i like my godzilla's weird um i'd like to, i mean like if shma would do i'm having a problem like with acronyms and saying things tonight goodness me but uh i would really like genuinely i would get a godzilla aquaticus from shma because i feel like that's a figure that can do like a lot of posability and okay. it's got a serpentine look. I feel like they could go with a lot of interesting directions with that. So wait and see, but you know, a lot of good stuff coming from uh, that end of things. I think that was pretty great series and well-regarded. Yeah. It was, it was quite balanced, maybe a bit heavy on the silent on the science. It was balanced in that regard, but it was legitimately interesting. And I, I think everybody was watching that. It was like, I have no idea where this is going, but there's definitely some kaiju action. Which is, you know, all you can ask for. Yeah. If it's not predictable, then at least it's fun in that regard. And that series definitely had that. There is something else. What else? Would you like? Tell oh, me. You, 
Well, if nothing else, Paul, did you want to go to that? Because you already called ours. <laughs> I did. I called it know. early, just so you didn't yeah, steal you it. Did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Pain in the butt. So what do we got for our listeners tonight? Okay, so if nothing else, mm-hmm. um, back, uh, way, 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 way back, uh, back in episode 58 of Kaiju Curry House, um, we discussed Kaiju Ramen, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, um, a magazine. It's a fantastic the, magazine. So I haven't, I haven't seen it. I know you actually wrote an article for it, didn't you, Joe? About your Titanosaurus, yep, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, which will, yeah, which will appear in a future issue. Um, it's great, folks. If you want to try, you know, kaiju ramen, it is a brush of breath, a breath of fresh air, and. I think that it's wonderfully balanced. It's written by the fans, for the fans. There's a lot of imaginative writing that goes into it. There's a lot of great product reviews, honest opinions. It's nice. It really is. And okay. I think a lot of people just appreciate, you know, getting a nice magazine in the mail. Of course, yeah, that's a PDF. That's it. So I, I think I do miss, because I used to subscribe to GFAN. And so I do miss getting a magazine um, in the post or something. But um yeah, so I've completely missed like this first year of issues. And fortunately, they've got me covered because they've just launched a new Kickstarter uh, for volume one, which pulls together all the issues so far. Yeah. Which is, um, yeah, perfect for me. And then you can, you know, there's there's different backings. So you can get one that comes with a poster or some chopsticks um, or one that includes a subscription for the next year as well as, you know, this this volume one. So there's lots of different, you know, versions on there to get you covered. But um I think I'm definitely going to get the volume one and see what I've been missing out on. Totally. So, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you stole my thunder because you called that one early, but what I'm going to say is if nothing else, you should definitely check out what X plus has on offer at the moment, because if you've got any holiday money left over or floating around, now's the time because they go out of stock very quickly. You should definitely get yourself hyped up for Godzilla versus the Power Rangers, which is going to be fun. And then on top of that, um, yeah, just uh, if you're in the United States, check out Rumble. I uh, get to cheat because for an American, the IP address and everything, so I get to watch it. But it is wholesome for the kids. You will enjoy it, um, at least their reactions. So it's fun in that regard. And keep following, or if you don't already, follow uh, Nanmu Studios on Instagram to check out all of the fantastic dinosaur monstery sculpts that they've been doing because they are worth it. Should actually go back and say that Rebor teased a Kongzilla figure last year which was supposed to drop in 2022. So I'm going to have to Mm, amend this episode and throw that out, but (laughs) totally go and follow Rebor as well. They make great figures. So have fun with that. But I think that's all the recommendations that we have for you and uh, all the things to really look forward to in 2022. Please let us know if we missed anything. And as always, folks, keep it kaiju.